Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm coming with today's scripture affirmation. Today we're coming from 2 Kings chapter 2, and I want to start in verse 9. In verse 9 it reads, And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. I want to look at this verse of scripture. If you remember in 1 Kings, this is when Elisha was anointed by Elijah. He was to follow behind him, to minister to him, to learn from him, so that when Elijah was taken up in a whirlwind when he was going to be taken up by God that Elisha was going to take his place. So we know that that he was faithfully following Elijah and we are taken to this verse of scripture because this is the time that Elijah is preparing to be taken up in the chariot of fire and he allows Elisha an opportunity three times to stay behind. Now Elisha has been following after him, ministering to him, learning from him, but this is the time that it's time for Elijah with a J, it's time for him to be taken up. And so as we begin at the first part of this chapter, it tells us in verse one, it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah unto heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said to Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. This was the first opportunity that Elijah, the one training Elisha, the one who was his his uh, mentor, so to speak, his trainer, so to speak, the one that Elisha was learning from, Elijah told him, you can stay right here because God's going to take me up in the world when you can stay behind. But Elijah Elisha said, as long as the Lord liveth, he said, as long as your soul lives, he said, as long as you're here and I can get a little bit more, I'm not staying behind. So then we get to the point where, or to the verse where it tells us that in verse four, Elijah says to Elisha, Terry here, I pray thee for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And so he says to Elijah, as long as the Lord liveth as your soul liveth, I'm not going to leave you. So they went to Jericho. This is the second time that Elisha's trainer, mentor, guide, Elijah told him you can stay behind. Now listen, because there's a point here, because Elijah is the one that is training, showing Elisha what to do. He's been following, they've been walking together for a period of time. And now it comes to the point where the one that is training him, the one that is leading him, the one that was mentoring him tells him, you don't have to go any further. You've done enough. You can stay right here. But Elisha keeps saying, no, I'm going with you. I'm not going to leave you. I'm going to the end. I'm finishing the race. I'm going to do all of it and not some of it. And so now you see, He's let him stay back when when the Lord told him to go to to Bethel. He told Elisha, you can stay here. He said, no. When when the Lord told Elijah to go to Jericho, he told Elisha, you can stay here. But Elisha said, no. And now we get down to verse six. And Elijah says to him, Terry, I pray thee here for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. And he said, as the Lord liveth and as your soul lives, I will not leave thee. So now this is the third time. Now it's the Jordan that the Lord is sending Elijah to and Elisha refuses to stay behind. What is the point? The point is, is that by the time we got down to verse nine, when they get to the place right before Elijah is taken up, we get to this point where Elijah turns around and looks at Elisha and says, what is it that you want me to do for you before I'm taken up? And Elisha tells him, I want a double portion of your spirit. I want twice as much as you. I want, I want a double. Well, you know, you see in the Bible six times where it talks about a double portion, and this is twice as much as everybody else is getting. And so now you look here and he's saying, I want twice as much. I don't want the minimum, so I'm not going to do the minimum. This is the point here is that we always talk about what we want or what we want to happen or the anointing we want upon them or what we want to accomplish, but we don't want to do all that it takes to get it. We don't want to press into God the way we're required. We don't want to have the relationship with him that we're called to have. We don't want to walk worthy of the calling. We don't want to do the maximum, but we want to do the minimum with the maximum results. And it doesn't work like that. See, Elisha had done enough to get what it was that God had already told him. 
that he would follow after Elijah. He had done enough. He had followed after me, had ministered to him. He had served with him. He had learned from him. If he would have stopped way back when Elijah told him could, that he could back uh, in the in the first and second verse, when, when Elijah told him, you stay right here, he, he could have stayed there and he would have still followed after Elijah, but he wouldn't have had a double portion. And the thing is, is that we, we shouldn't settle for the minimum. We shouldn't do the least because God is able to do great and mighty things in us and through us. But we have to be willing to have enough faith. We have to be committed enough, devoted enough, surrendered enough. We have to want to go that extra mile that when the person that that tells us that the one that that God has sent to help us, the one that God has shown to lead us or or whatever the situation is, even on your job, even in our in our family situations, many times that we are doing the minimum and we expect maximum results. And so I'm encouraging somebody today, don't slack off off, do the maximum. Do everything that you can. Press into the things of God. Press in to your purpose. Press in to the dream. Press into the vision. Do the maximum. Do 110%. Don't give God your least. It's even when we're praying, people say, well, I pray, well, I pray, but but, the, but people will give God their, their time at the end of the day when they're tired or, or, or they'll try to pray as they're going along, but they didn't spend that quality time in his presence on their face, spending time talking to God and listening and meditating on the word. He wants our best time, our first time. He wants us to put in everything, to have integrity, not to be half-hearted, not to be lukewarm. Don't just be a church member. Don't just be a pew sitter. Don't say you're in the choir, but you don't come to choir rehearsal. Don't say that you're going to preach a message, but you don't study the word. Don't say you're going to play the music, but you never practice the keys. Don't say that you're going to teach Sunday school, but you never study the lesson. Don't say that you're going to do these things for God, and all you're doing is the minimum, because God gave us his maximum. He gave us everything. He gave us his son. Jesus didn't get sick for us. He died for us. He gave his life for us. He didn't just half-heartedly do it. He didn't do it uh, in, in, a, in a lukewarm manner. He gave all. He suffered for us. He went through the pain for us, the agony for us so that we could have life and live it to the fullest. Abundant life is not just that you can get all this stuff from God and be rich. Abundant life is that you're pressing into everything and you're doing everything so that you can be all that God purposed you to be so that you can bring glory to his name. And so I encourage you today, remind yourself that you can't just do the minimum. I don't care what's going on. You got to press through and do what God called you to do. You got to put 110% in. What if you were going to school to be a doctor and you decided that you didn't want to do all the homework and you didn't want to take all the exams? How would that work out? Do you think that you would become a doctor? Would you be a good doctor? Would you would you be able to really help people? Would you be able, you know, we have to want to do the very, very best. And so just like we would study in the natural, we have to study in the spiritual. Just like we would give our all in this world to do things for the world and according to the world's ways, we have to be able to do the same for God. Elisha shows us. Us. Don't just give up. Even when the person that you look up to, the person that is telling you that they're the ones training you and they're the ones mentoring you and they seem to know more than you do and they tell you, oh, that's enough. Don't just say, oh, okay, that's enough. No, you keep pressing into it. Elisha's teacher told him it was enough. You don't have to go with me. You can stay here and just tarry here. Pray here. Stay here. And he said, no, 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 no. As long as the Lord lives, as long as your soul lives, as long as you're still here, I'm going. And so I encourage you. Some people get mad at the church and they want to leave. Some people get mad because things didn't go their way and they want to quit. Somebody, you know, some something happens and, and you say, well, that's enough. Well, I'm tired. Well, you know, I did enough. Well, I did more than somebody else. Stop comparing yourself to other people and stop being lukewarm and don't be half-hearted. Give everything. Elisha said, I want a double portion. I want twice as much. And he got it because when you look at his story and you see that he did double miracles, that he did some more things, more than Elijah did. When you look at his life and you see that he pressed forward, when you, the more you put in, the more God rewards it. You, you, you know, you, the more work you put into it, the more God can trust you and he can use you because he knows you're committed and you're devoted. And so I encourage you today, when you feel like quitting, just remind yourself, I want a double portion. I want a double portion. I want a double portion. Even Job, when everything was taken away from him, he was rich. He, he, he had children, he had family, he had land, he had animals, he had servants, he lost everything, including his health. But because he continued to talk to God and because he didn't turn his back on God, because he didn't sin against God in all of it, 
God restored him and gave him double for his trouble. He got twice as much in the end. It says his latter was better than his former. And so I encourage you today, you got to stand and press forward. Give it your all. Don't let others encourage you to quit. Don't let others encourage you to be half-hearted and lukewarm. You put in 100% and you remind yourself, I want a double today. I'll have a double today. I want a double portion. As long as the Lord lives and as long as our soul lives, I will not turn back. I will not quit. So today, remind yourself that you want a double portion. You want all that God has for you. Don't short, don't short, uh, 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 don't shorten the things that God has for you. Don't take less than what he's offering you. Don't settle for the minimum when you can have the maximum. And remember this, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You're without excuse. God has equipped you with every spiritual blessing, spiritual gift. He's given you spiritual power. He's given you everything that you need to be more than a conqueror. And so I encourage you today. I want a double portion. Do you want a double portion? Do you want it all? Then you've got to give it all. Surrender everything and just dive in and just say, God, whatever you say, here I am. Wherever you want to send me, I'm going. Whatever you tell me to do, yes and amen. Here I am. I am a surrendered vessel unto you. Whatever you have for me, you let me know that it's for me. So I'm going to give you all of me because I was purchased with the precious blood of Jesus. I don't belong to myself, but I belong to you. Remind yourself today that you can have a double today. So I want a double portion. 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 And as you're reminding yourself that you want a double portion, you'll begin to work at it like you want a double portion. You'll begin to surrender like you want. You'll begin to su submit yourself like you want. You'll begin to press into those things. Paul says, I press towards them. Bar. Press today. Press today. Press today because you want a double portion. And so I encourage you to join us every day from 6 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for our prayer line and also um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this message with five or ten other people because we need to get the word in us so we can walk in the in, in the word. We don't want to be a lukewarm church. We don't want to be half-hearted and weak because we're called to be a light, to be bold as lions. We're called for a great and mighty work and so we got to get the word in us. Share the video, subscribe, join us for prayer. Stand on the word and remind yourself today that you want a double portion. I'll see you the next time. God bless you.